last topic of module two, part E, brute force method. Yeah. The reason we have five parts, uh, remember we use one part for quiz number one. Yeah. And uh, after today's lecture, we complete module two, so you can expect our quiz number two will start at this weekend. Yeah. So I try to create it sometime tomorrow yeah, and post it yeah, probably a night, late night. So you can start to work with more than one week. Yeah, just as the quiz number one. Okay. All right, so let's do our last topic, brute force method. We uh, I mentioned this brute force method a little bit uh, for in our polynomial evaluation problem today. So let's learn this topic uh, another time with a little more information. E.1, introduction to brute force method. First, a description of brute force method. I like to describe some properties of a typical brute force method. Usually there is no clear definition for that. So people say in that way, yeah, yeah, because based on the uh, usual understanding, uh, uh, people can understand the meaning of this brute force method from its name easily. Yeah. Properties, uh, the first one, it's a straightforward approach. Yeah. You solve, you just solve, uh, here we're talking about a computing problem. You solve a computing problem without using any special techniques. Yeah. If you use some special techniques, yeah, so then people may not treat it as brute force, okay? or with the minimum, minimum advanced knowledge. You, know. you can use the knowledge that everybody knows. Yeah. Everybody uh, here, I mean, uh, in our field, yeah. in our you know, CS field, uh, CS basic CS training, okay? Yeah. All right, you can always apply it to a problem. Given any computing problem, yeah. without using any special technique, yeah. you don't worry about the efficiency. You don't worry about the performance. You only want to get a correct answer. Yeah. So you can always apply the brute force method on a computing problem. In general, it is not the best algorithm. All right, yeah, in general, uh, for here, I like to say for non trivial problems. Okay, yeah, so here, let's say, yeah, for non trivial problems. Okay, for trivial problems, <laughs> you can get the best solution. Yeah. It is usually used as the starting point for more advanced algorithms. Uh, here, I remember I talked about this point before. Because when we have a relatively hard computing problem, at the beginning, we do not have any idea how to get started. Yeah. Most people have this kind of feeling, okay? At the beginning, you know, we do not have any idea how to get started, okay? Yeah. Then in order to get a, a started, uh, some experienced problem solvers, now here, let me use the problem solvers. Uh, they, like to start with this brute force method. 
We just want to find the solution first. All right. This procedure can help us understand the problem a little better. So when we work on it, when we, you know, uh, get our hands on this problem, so we can understand better and better. Yeah. So that's the, you know, the point. We know uh, this could not give us a good solution. Yeah. We do not expect the best solution, but even not a good solution. Okay, yeah. The efficiency difference between the brute force method and more advanced algorithm could be huge. Yeah. This is from the experience. Yeah. From our polynomial problem. Yeah. So we have seen this point from the polynomial problem. Yeah. Here at this point, uh, you have our programming project number one. Okay. Yeah. So you need to do experiments on three different algorithms. In that way, you will have your own experience. Yeah. Because before you do the programming, you just heard from my explanation, I told you, you know, the difference is big, but now you have a chance to do experiments by yourself. Let you feel about the huge difference. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> yeah, so the polynomial problem. Yeah. In that one, uh, method one, I tried to, yeah. So when you do experiments, the method one, Remember, I asked you to, you know, do experiment uh, with, a with a size approximately around 20, uh, 200,000, not 20, 200,000, uh, around this one. Yeah. This one, uh, then the response time, you need to expect response time. approximately approximately 30 seconds 30 seconds yeah. yeah so because if you do not have, have oh sorry. <laughs> sorry here i let you know first you may need to wait about 30 seconds because it is so long when you sit there waiting for the response for 30 seconds, that's really long. And uh, if you do not know this ahead of time, you may need to wait 30 seconds. If you do not know this fact, you may feel something is wrong. What's wrong with it? When I run the program, I couldn't get anything. Because when you sit there waiting for the response 30 seconds, you know, feels like century. Yeah. But here I tell you the fact so you, you can prepare mentally. Yeah, so that is normal. <laughs> that is quite normal. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, 